Hi everybody, this is Thomas from the Udemy courses about Solidity and how to program on the Ethereum blockchain. And in this video, I'm going to show you some changes that were recently introduced in Solidity, especially the new transfer function that is the successor to the send or the call construct that we usually use and the new exception handling and the functions require in the cert. That was recorded in mid-July. We have today the 12th of July. And uh, so I guess it's pretty up to date. So uh, before we used usually address send or address call. And the problem with address send is that it just sends the minimum amount of gas along. So if you're calling another contract with that, then you run into the problem that the contract can mainly just fire an event and can't do anything more. So people defaulted back to using a low level call uh, address dot call or address the gas and then give it an amount of gas and then call. And those two are low level functions and they return a Boolean and all of that ended up in a very bad design. Uh, you have to wrap an if around and if this uh, evaluates to false. So if address send fails, and it will return a false or if address.call fails, it will return false. And then you have to throw an exception. So that's pretty bad. So uh, we have a new function now, uh, address.transfer and then the amount to transfer uh, that both delegates gas and delegates the exception. So in, in the, if in the uh, contract that is getting called uh, is an exception fired, then it will automatically delegate back to uh, the current contract and it will fire this exception as well and everything gets reverted and uh, every gas paid will be refunded. Uh, now to the new exception handling. Uh, currently we have, we have the throw and uh, which is interesting because you can't really catch it. And there's also no message you can't attach. So it basically just re reverts everything and throws an exception. And uh, the Solidity developers were pretty good at finding a better solution. So now we have two different style of exceptions. One is an assert style exception. The other one is a require style exception. For example, you can do uh, assert statements and it will evaluate uh, the, the argument for example, one is one, so that's true, that will just pass. Or if you uh, assert uh, variables, that they are the same. And we will have a look uh, in a second what it means uh, to have the different assert requires that exceptions. A require would be, for example, that the balance should be bigger or equal than the amount that somebody want to withdraw. And in, in general, that leads to a little bit of better structure of how the code is structured and is better readable for uh, maybe an audit or if you uh, give the code to someone else or publish it somewhere, it's just better readability. And uh, this is how the two exceptions behave. In, in the first one is the assert style exception. If an assert style exception is thrown, then it will consume all the gas. Uh, it will also revert all the changes made, but it will consume all the gas. And a typical assert style exception would throw if uh, you're accessing an array uh, with an, uh, with a key that is out of the bounds of the array or with a negative uh, index, or you shift by a negative amount, uh, which doesn't work, or if there's a division by zero, or if you just have an assert statement uh, with an argument that evaluates to false. And there's some more of them. Uh, we're going to have a look at some examples in a second. Uh, but you, but if you want to read through that, uh, you find it in the Solidity docs in uh, the Solidity in depth and then the control structures. The behavior of the require style exceptions is uh, a little bit different. It will also revert all the changes, but it also returns all the gas. And it's basically the successor to the previously used throw. And uh, you can also just write a require. And uh, if this evaluates to false, it will also just return all the gas and revert all the 
changes. Um, a require state exception is also thrown if you call another contract and that the contract throws an exception or if you create a new contract and, and during creation happens an error and that uh, throws an exception. If transfer fails, that is a require style exception. Or for example, if you receive ether without a payable modifier. So if you're sending ether to a contract, to a function, and it doesn't have a payable modifier. You can also read more on exactly the same link uh, in the control structures in the Solidity docs. Before we have a look at some examples, check out my courses on Udemy, uh, for example, the Ethereum blockchain developer course. Some new courses are coming up. Subscribe to this channel. And now let's have a look at some samples. I'm here in a remix and I've prepared two files. And uh, the first one is pretty short. It will just uh, show you some of the assert style and require style exceptions. And the other one shows a little bit more. Uh, it shows the interaction between two uh, contracts. So let's go to the first one uh, first. The assert style exceptions, they are using all the gas. So for example, this would be a uh, memory out of bounds exception that we know eventually from Java. Uh, so you have a mem uh, an array out of bounds exception, of course. Uh, so you have an array with 10 elements and you're trying to access the 11th one or write on the 11th one and it will just throw an uh, exception. So let me just create this contract here and uh, execute the uh, assert exception array to large. So it will just throw an exception. And uh, division by zero, so you have one variable, another variable, and then try to divide 50 by zero. Uh, it, it's perfectly fine. The, uh, uh, the static analysis doesn't show any errors here. Um, and if I execute it, it will throw an exception. And uh, this is just a typical uh, assert. Here, uh, this evaluates to false because there's false inside. This assert will throw an exception. And the shift by negative amount, so I have a sub variable and I try to shift it by minus one. Again, the uh, static analysis doesn't show any problems here. Uh, it throws an exception. And uh, here we have the throw that we know from before. And here, the static analysis will just give us a warning and say, well, warning throw is deprecated in favor of revert require or assert and revert is basically a, a require exception it will just revert and and uh, throw an exception so uh, this throws uh, it's not really surprising that it throws an exception uh, require uh, require evaluates to false if there's false inside and uh, it throws an exception as well and uh, this reverts well, reverts and throws an exception, and those require style exceptions, they are returning all the gas and, of course, reverting all the changes that were made. Now, let's have a look at the uh, interaction between two contracts. And I have basically the same contract here, just a little bit more uh, content. I have a second contract on the top. Um, I have a number, it's zero. I have one function that increases the number a little bit. I have another function that just doesn't revert. And I have uh, the uh, anonymous function, uh, which is payable and calls another function that throws an exception. Um, when I create my test revert assert contract, then I create my second contract directly in the constructor and going to assign it here. And um, here in the require style uh, exception part, I have uh, three functions that are calling the second contract. The one is uh, directly calling this throws a revert. So uh, it's calling the revert function from the second contract. And it should basically just delegate the exception here and throw as an exception and revert all the changes made. Then I have on the bottom here a change with revert, uh, where I first increase the number, just to show you that it's really not storing any changes on uh, in the state here. 
And here I have a payable function that can show you that the transfer is really delegating any exceptions. So because if I call transfer without any, any function parameter, then it will call the anonymous function and this one will call this function and this reverts. And uh, of course, here's the danger zone because this will not throw any exception. And here we have a possible entry point for uh, a double entry uh, attack. So we have here a call and here a send. And those two are uh, returning a Boolean false if they fail, uh, which is really bad, which cost somehow the DAO to get hacked. Um, plus there was a bad design, but uh, those are a bad, really bad construct. So, uh, and also the, the static analysis is warning us uh, of them. And that's uh, pretty much standard what the people are using now. And it would be great if they could just move over to transfer. Now, before I talk too much, uh, let's have a look how this all works out. So I'm creating my interaction between contracts, contract, and uh, that automatically creates uh, a second contract here. And uh, my number, which on the very bottom, I have two functions that work uh, completely normal, get number that returns from a second contract the number and uh, change or increase the number from a second contract without any exception. Let's uh, call this first and let's see if it's working correctly. Uh, change without revert. Where is it? Uh, change without revert. Uh, it's going through, there is no exception. Get my number, it must be one now. So this is Okay, straightforward. Now we have a change with revert, change with revert, that's throwing an exception, and it's still one. So even though I called increase number first and then revert that, it's still one. Uh, it's It didn't change anything in the second contract. Then we have a throw in second contract, and uh, this throws an exception, and uh, call send contract with transfer here i'm gonna uh, just transfer a, a few way a uh, thousand way and uh, call send contract with transfer and you can see that it froze an exception because uh, our second contract here froze an exception now let's go to the danger zone uh, i will try now and call the second contract and and pay uh, some some uh, value along some way say a thousand way and uh, here I have called second contract and the problem here is it just runs through it doesn't revert anything uh, it consumes gas even though the second contract failed and that also means that my second contract could call my first contract now again and it will just go on and on like this until the gas is used um, then send funds to the second contract. Uh, not really surprising what's going to happen here. I didn't uh, check on any uh, return values and it would just run through. It doesn't throw any error, even though somewhere along the line it throws an error. That's it uh, for this uh, little video. I hope you liked it. Check out the blockchain developer courses in Udemy. And let me know what you think about this. I, I love to hear from you in the comments.